Hello friends, welcome back to Huawei AS. Welcome to the discussion on daily MCQ. Today is 26th of July 2021 and now we are going to discuss 5 current affair based MCQs. Now let's begin. But first let us discuss the question which was asked on Saturday and the question was the Supreme Court was set up A by an act of parliament, B by the constitution, C under the government of India act of 1935 and D by a presidential order. So here we have to choose the correct answer. And some of you have given the correct answer on Saturday. If you see, on Saturday it was Abzur Qureshi, Abhijit, Rajesh, Shubham Basak and Divya Vasisht who gave the correct answer. So this uh, Supreme Court, if you see, it has a huge history. The establishment of court can be dated back to the Indian Council Act of 1773. It was in 1773 that the court was established. But it has taken various forms, various changes were made later on in the Council Act of 84 and later on but if you see the Supreme Court in its form, it was established or you can say it was initially mentioned in the 1935 Act, the Government of India Act of 1935. And this Government of India Act 1935 became the basis for the formation of Supreme Court and this court was formed in 1937. 1937. But later on, when the constitution was formed, the Supreme Court of India, because in 1935 Act, it was known as the Federal Court. It was known as the Federal Court, but later on, after the constitution was established, the Supreme Court of India was, was established, you can say. It derived, it derived the form from the 1935 Act, but the Supreme Court was established based on the Act, you can say based on the article of the constitution. It's a constitutional body. Article 124 defines the Supreme Court, right? And the Supreme Court is the supreme judicial body of the country. And below the Supreme Court, you will have the High Court and the Local Court, that is the District Court. Okay, so this is the hierarchy that we have, right? So this is all the information about Supreme Court that we need to remember and Supreme Court has various powers which we will discuss in some other lecture, right? Now let's move on. And guys, uh, as you know, daily we will be uploading five current affair based MCQs and their solutions and also on daily basis we will be uploading the current affairs or you can say the daily news articles as well in a summarized way. So do join our telegram channel for all this information because all this information is going to fetch you those extra marks which is the difference between the person who has cleared the exam and the person who did not clear. So do use these resources very wisely for your revision and everything so that you clear the exam with flying colors. Now let's begin with the discussion and the first question. The global survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation sometimes seen in the news is conducted by A. World Bank, B. UNESCAP, C. OECD and D. World Customs Organization. The global survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation so this is with regard to the trade so in the main exam you can have another option called uncTAD United Nations Convention for Trade and Development uncTAD so here you might get confused between uncTAD and World Bank and others because normally these are the global bodies which will release various indices but if you see this global survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation this is released by this survey is conducted by UNESCAP now we will see about this so recently the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia Pacific it has released this survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation and India scored 90.32 percentage. It is a remarkable jump for India if you see because in the 2019 survey India scored only 78.49 percent. And this global survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation is conducted once in every two years. So it's a so it's a uh, it's a survey which is conducted every two years and conducted by UNESCAP. Remember this and this 2021 survey includes an assessment of 58 trade facilitation measures that are covered by the WTO trade facilitation agreement. That is the important thing and a higher score for a country will help in the will help the business to make a good investment decision. So that's why this is very very important and the survey has evaluated 143 economies based on five key indicators and the key indicators if you see they are transparency, formalities, institutional arrangement and cooperation along with paperless trade and cross-border paperless trade. All of these things are measured and India is the best performing country in comparison to the other South and Southwest Asian region partners and even the Asia Pacific region as well. So India is improving a lot on the business front and this is what we would like to see in India so that more and more investments will come in India and this will enhance India's stature in the international market. 
okay so if you see india score the score is greater than the average score of eu so that's what that, that means we are moving forward with a very in a very good direction and india achieved a 100% score for the transparency index and 66% in the women in trade co component because if you see in india one of the major problem is that the women are generally not included in the business or you can say the opportunities for women, women are less on on the other hand the women participation is less is what we can say on a global average if you see women contribute or you can say the participation of women in the workforce is approximately is on an average is 36 percent but in india it is less than you can say around 20 percent so that is the that is the major gap which we need to fill in order to boost our economy because if half of the population is not productive that means there is a problem in the you there is a problem in the structure of india and that which that is what we need to address it okay and this survey also say the same thing now let's move on to the second question the right to be forgotten, sometimes seen in the news, right to be forgotten, falls under the purview of which article of the Indian constitution? A. Article 14, B. Article 21, C. Article 22 and D. Article 17. So if you see this right to be forgotten, so it falls under an article which is the most expanded article by the Supreme Court of India. And this article is Article 21, option B, Article 21. So right to be forgotten is part of the right to privacy, which the Supreme Court said is part of the fundamental right under Article 21. Supreme Court in the Puttaswamy case versus Union of India said that the right, the right to privacy is part of the fundamental right. Right. So recently a TV celebrity has approached the Delhi High Court with a plea saying that in his videos, photographs and articles be removed from the internet citing right to be forgotten. And this right to be forgotten falls under the purview of individuals' right to privacy according to the 2017 judgment of the Supreme Court in the Puttaswamy versus Union of India case. And this was declared as a fundamental right. And the right to privacy is governed by the Personal Data Protection Bill, which is yet to be passed by the Parliament. So let's see, when this bill is passed by the Parliament, then we have to discuss about this bill because this will be very important from the main's perspective as well. And this bill exclusively, this personal data protection bill exclusively talks about this right to be forgotten because till when a person's data has to be there in the internet, it has to be guided by a law. Otherwise, the person's privacy will fall into danger. Right? Now let's move on to the third question. And the third question is, consider the following statements with respect to the production linked incentive scheme, the PLS scheme. First one, it is a central sector scheme which invites foreign companies to set units in India and discourage local scheme and discourage sorry here yeah, and uh, discourage local companies to set up expand existing manufacturing units. Okay, and the second one, the scheme has been approved by sectors like automobile, pharmaceutical, and special steel. Here we have to choose the correct answer: A one only, B two only, C both one and two, and D neither one nor two. So if you see this production linked incentive scheme. This scheme is basically a central sector scheme to set up units for both domestic as well as the foreign companies. So the first statement is wrong. But if you see the second statement, this scheme has been approved for uh, sectors like automobile, pharmaceutical and special steel. This is the right statement. So B, two only is the correct answer. So if you see recently the union cabinet has approved a production linked incentive scheme, which is a central sector scheme for manufacturing of speciality steel with a budgetary allocation of 6,322 crore over a five year period from 2023 to 24. Because normally if you see this high, this uh, manufacturing of high speciality steel, this kind of skill can be used for manufacturing of various things. It can be used for manufacturing of special automobiles. It can be used for manufacturing of some different kind of electronics. So it can be used for multiple things. And this is what we are lacking actually. If you see most of our uh, uh, electronic manufacturing or automobile manufacturing, we are importing most of the components. So we are dependent on the imports. We are dependent on the imports. That means the high, uh, high value supply chain. We are not part of it. We are just part of the integration. You can say, or you can say in simple words, we are just part of the assembly. So that is what we need to reduce. We have to be self-independent or you can say we have to be independent in the high value supply chain as well. So in order to boost domestic manufacturing and cut down the import bills, the central government in 2020 has launched a scheme called the production linked incentive scheme that aims to give companies an incentive on incremental sale from the products manufactured in domestic units. Okay, that means uh, all the sales that the companies will be doing on that incentives will be given. So this incentive will be based on the production. So that how many units they are producing and how many units they are selling based on that, based on that, all these production linked incentives will be given. And the scheme invites foreign companies to set up units in India. However, it also aims to encourage local companies to set up and expand the existing manufacturing units under the scheme. 
as I told already. This is for, to encourage both domestic companies as well as foreign companies. And the scheme has also been approved for sectors like automobile, pharmaceutical, IT hardware including laptop, mobile phone, telecom equipment, white goods, chemical cells, food processing and textiles etc. So in all these sectors, this scheme is approved and if you see, when we talk about the production linked incentives, mostly we talk about only the electronic manufacturing. Okay, but we have this scheme for even pharmaceutical and all these production, all these uh, food processing industries, etc. as well. Because all these uh, industries, if you see, they are called the sunrise industries. That means they have very huge potential to grow. And India has the, India wants to tap this potential in order to ensure that the economy grows and also the country develops. Now let's move on to the fourth question. Consider the following statements with respect to the National, Se National Security Council. First one, National Security Council of India is a three-tiered organization that oversees political, economic, energy and security issues of strategic concern. This is the first statement. And second statement, if you see, the cabinet secretary presides over the National Security Council. So here we have to choose the correct answer. So if you see here, this National Security Council it is basically a three-tiered organization to oversee political, economic, energy and security issues. The first statement is right. But the second statement is not right because the National Security Council is headed by Ajit Dovalji. So it is headed by the National Security Advisor. So that's why the second statement is wrong and the first statement is right. So A1 only is the correct answer. So recently, amid this Pegasus controversy, it was reported that the union government's expenditure on the National Security Council Secretariat has increased tenfold in 2017-18 to Rs. 333 crore. Like, that means in 2016-17 it was only 33 crore, but in 2017-18 it was 333 crore. So it has increased tenfold. So that's why this was a news. This National Security Council, if you see, it's a three-tiered organization that oversees political, economical, energy and other security issues of strategic concern and the national security advisor presides over the NSC and is also the primary advisor to the prime minister and the current national security advisor is the is Ajit Dovalji and it was in 1999 when this was formed and this NSC if you see national security national security council it comprises of this three tier structure as I told at the first tier it is the strategy policy group after that you have the national security advisory board and after that you have the national security council secretariat. So all of this is a three-tiered organization and the SPG chaired by the cabinet secretary is, is the principal forum for inter-ministerial coordination integration of the for the integration of relative inputs. So SPG, the strategic policy group, if you see, you might be confused with another SPG what we have, the special protection group which provides security to the prime minister and the president of India. Only the prime minister, ex-prime minister and the president will get security from the special protection group. group. Okay. So this NSAB, Okay, this National Security Advisory Board undertakes long-term analysis and provides perspective on the national security as well. So, it, you can say it's under the Prime Minister Office which actually deals with all the holistic issues of national security, issues concerning with the dif uh, different elements which are concerned with the national security. And it's a three-tiered organization, right? Now, let's move on to the next question, the fifth question. During a thunderstorm, the thunder in the skies is produced by the first one, mating of cumulonimbus clouds in the sky, second one, lightning that separates nimbus clouds, and third one, violent upward movement of air and water particles. So we have to choose the correct answer. So it's a previous year uh, civil services question from 2013. If you see the thunderstorm, actually this is not, all these three are not the causes of thunderstorm. So D, none of the above produces thunder is the correct answer. So this thunderstorm basically if you see, it is a sound caused by lightning discharge. Remember this, thunderstorm is basically the output of the lightning discharge. And because what will happen is that during this lightning, the air gets heated, the air which is there in the path get, get heated. And when this air gets heated, what will happen is that the pressure in that region gets increases. So the pressure, when the pressure increases, this, this uh, air gets expanded. And during this expansion, it takes a form of supersonic wave. and this supersonic wave, it, it, it actually passes into the surroundings as a shock wave and it creates an acoustic signal that is heard as thunder. Okay, so that is the important thing which we need to understand here. Okay, so this is all the information about thunder and uh, now let's look at the question of the day. The power of judicial review ensures A. Supremacy of the Supreme Court B. The Supreme Court can review its own judgments C. Constitutionality of laws and D. Justice by the subordinate court. So this question is regarding the judicial review. Do give your answer in the comment box and tomorrow we will discuss this question. And guys, these are in initiatives 
we have launched the vision prelims test series summary vision mains test series summary vision monthly magazine and vision pt365 summary as well use these summaries wisely so that your preparation becomes more easy and more efficient as well right so that's it guys for the day i'll see you again tomorrow with five more mcqs till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind